This course has helped me to visualize and verbalize many ideas that have been bouncing around in my pedagogical brain for many years. Examining the philosophical foundations of curriculum theory helped me to find the words progressivist and reconstructivist, to identify my personal understanding of and role in curriculum development. To begin, the quote that I immediately relate to from the Foundations of Curriculum's Chapter 1 on Philosophical Foundations of Curriculum states that the emphasis should be placed on how to think, not what to think, and that our role as teachers should be one that guides the student through the educational landscape. I believe that our students have access to boundless information through technology, and our jobs as teachers should be one that helps the student analyze, dissect, scrutinize and investigate to help them shape their own personal worldview. Second, I was drawn to the essence of reconstructionism theories and the ideas that students and teachers must affect change and that education as an institution cannot be stagnant. Education must change to adapt to a rapidly changing environment. The top-down approach to change and slow-moving governments virtually demand that teachers and students affect grassroots change that suits the particular truth of right now. This is also related to the effect of technology and the speed at which information can be shared, social systems can be modified, agendas can progress, and movements can happen. It is pertinent that our students can look at this limitless world and know what reflects their values and what does not and to know that they can have an effect, make change, and revolutionize their world. One social revolution that seems to be gaining momentum is the queer revolution as it pertains to the LBGTQI community. In the social foundations of curriculum th theory, there is reference made to Havinger's tasks for periods of human development, and for the adolescent period, a specific task is achieving a masculine or feminine role. This theory of human development is over 60 years old, however, was and still might be considered very influential. For me, the idea of achieving a masculine or feminine role is limiting, subjective, and socially stifling. This is an antiquated idea, but its echoes are still ringing through to today. In Alberta specifically, there is limited education about LGBTQI lifestyles, and despite what I see as a progressive and forward-thinking student population and community around me, the government is not only slow-moving, but sometimes backward-thinking, as highlighted by Bill 44, which is meant to preserve the human rights of the severely normal Albertans, where discussions about religion, sex, and sexual orientation in the classroom must be permitted by parents. This backwards thinking is also highlighted by the lack of support for teachers in Alberta to discuss these topics with competence and care, as demonstrated by the limited Alberta education health outcomes and the lack of availability and funding for professional development of this kind. This amounts to systemic marginalization of particular peoples through education. When one is not represented in their community, it is harder to develop a positive self-concept and the system of waiting for top-down governmental changes is leaving a community of students still trying to find a place to identify. These are areas where student and teacher-led innovations need to take hold to have our education systems reflect the societal progress. This type of progress should reflect and accept the citizens of the world of all types. However, these antiquated and colonial ideals have completely marginalized the Indigenous perspective, especially when it comes to two-spiritedness, a belief that is represented in so many cultures, but has been marginalized and in some cases criminalized. Other Indigenous values that are disparaged involve the reverence and wisdom of elders and oneness with each other, as well as oneness with the earth. David Suzuki reminds us that we share the air and the water, and that is what we are made of. We are all part of one another. Carl Sagan eloquently explains the reality of today by saying that we have a responsibility to be more kind with each other and to preserve and cherish the only home we have ever known. These are some philosophies that have helped me to identify the ways that I have included the environment as an educational setting, like introducing poetry from the mountain's perspective in English language arts, 
to larger endeavors like getting on the ocean to interact with nature in a real, in-context way, to understand what can be lost if change is not affected by us. It makes most sense to link the environment to all parts of the curriculum because it is connected to all parts of being and surviving as a human being. For students to want to be a part of changing the system for their own survival, they must first know that questioning the systems is not just their right, but also their duty. And in order to achieve this, educators must provide perspectives and a forum in which they are not learning what to think, but how to think. The skills in English language arts are, to me, viewed as a means to communicate, persuade, convince, inform, express, and affect change. Students today need more skills for navigation through communication than ever before. They are bombarded with information, selling them a product, a lifestyle, a way to be in this world, and it is our part as educators to hone these skills so that they are making the most informed decision. Decisions based on what they value as human beings, living and breathing, working and progressing on this planet. My personal beliefs no doubt come through in my teaching, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I teach with inclusiveness, sustainability, and caring as my lenses. The world I hope to move forward in as a human being on this planet is one that is tolerant, accepting, responsible, nature-driven, and caring for our fellow human being and the human beings that will occupy the planet after we're gone.